So yeah, thank you much, everyone. So my name is Sivica. Uh, this is James. He'll introduce himself later. We are from a company called Spatial Base, just up the road in Tadley. Uh, come, coming to this conference like almost once a year. So last time we were in Cardiff. So the thing that we are currently working with is stack fast API. So raise your hand, anyone who knows what stack is? One, two, three. Okay, who knows who, what data cube is? One, two, three. Okay, one, one to one, so that's not that bad. So basically, STAC stands for Spatial Temporal Asset Catalog, which is a way to store your Earth observation data, but not, not, not only Earth observation data, in time and spatial and in time extent. So think of it as a catalog where you have a metadata JSON body, which is describing your satellite imagery, which is uh, further segregated into collections and items. So for example, of the world's most famous stack catalog, we have Microsoft Planetary Computer, which is a collection of, eight, uh, collection of 86 different types of data sets coming from around the world, which are most of them are free and up, open to download. So for example, we do have Landsat, Landsat Collection 2, level 2 there, which is consisting of Landsat 5 to Landsat 9. We have some lovely stack here. There we go. Yeah, which, which is consisting from Landsat 5 to Landsat 8. Uh, scenes for, for this whole, whole world. So the Stackfast API gives us a quick and easy way to query it by giving it a post request containing our uh, spatial extent as in a B box or a geo polygon and time temporal extent in just normal standard JSON format. And we can retrieve all the sections, sections of the world that has those scenes overlapping it in. So yeah, we are currently using something like this Stackfast API to catalog a, a set of uh, Earth observation scenes from satellites combined with the air, aerial photography. So yeah, James can talk about Stack now for a bit. Yeah, so inherently there's a problem with satellite data and usually a lot of the companies that are going to be work with have an issue that they have loads of data which is just stored in different folders. So the cool thing with Stack is that it's a way to index all of this and just have it all in one different place, or in one same place. So we have something called collections. So if I go to collections here, ah, so there's some JSON view on here. Uh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Copy that thing. Usually this works, or I could put it here. Yeah, just slash collections. Slash collections. So come Microsoft. About two years ago, was it? Yeah. I'm going to release this. So this is all of the open data. So on, on the theme of open data, if you ever want to have some open data for some satellites, including kind of Landsat, Intentional, the Algorithm Daymet stuff, literally absolutely everything is on here. So here we have the Daymet annual ones, the Daymet ones in Puerto Rico. If you have stuff over there, this is just organized randomly. But if we go down, and like I'm kind of, this goes down about 86. 86,000 lines if you see the really small little thing there. So it's an amazing place to just kind of be able to store all, all of your index kind of data. And then here, we also have the um, kind of metadata which is attached to the kind of collection. So here we have the um, kind of time bands, the conformal conic, which I have no idea what that is. But if you are interested, I'm sure that that is pretty cool. Um, so we've been working with this as a way to have like a kind of back end of a way to store data. So there's loads of open source stuff like the Stack Fast API, um, loads of stuff that we've made as well. Yeah, <laughs> various services, for example, which would uh, let you make a mosaic, WMTS mosaic out of a collection. So uh, think of it as a Stack Fast API is a place where you can programmatically enter your records in a catalog collection style of hierarchy. And then you can point it to sort of various tools like WMTS, the Tyler server. You can load it into a QGIS as a QGIS extension. You can display it on a map. You can use a programmatic access to which something which is called PyStack, which will just make you, let you make an X-ray from the collection, so you can do machine learning easy on it. So yeah, and the, the tools that we are making for the Stackfast API is usually just. Uh, wrappers and signing proxies around it. So even this being on Microsoft Planetary, it's still hrefs, the URLs to the data, require a free SAS token that you need to ask and request. So one, one of the services that we provide, the microservice that we created is, is when you ask for a collection uh, hrefs, it'll actually go off and to our microservice, which will sign it with a 
API tokens. You can actually download all the data. So all these downstream tools like Stack, Tyler's work. So we are exposing that uh, through API management in Azure. So our Stack in cloud currently consists of mostly Kubernetes, Kubernetes hosting the Stack Fast API and other microservices also in Kubernetes Hosting, hosting those additional proxies and stuff like that. Yeah. So with the stack, uh, by default, uh, the minimum stack standard, uh, you must define a spatial, temp spatial extent, temporal extent, collection ID, uh, description, I think, is not And necessary. SQL as well, which yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah, so that, th these are the fields. Then you can use that SQL, like Jem said, to... So if you think of this body, like for FIA items, uh, with the SQL, which I want James talk about, basically you can query on each of uh, you, you. You can make a lookup query for each of these keys. So that is the very powerful thing with Stack. So you can, for example, give me Landsat 8 data over the uh, Solomon Islands, where the cloud cover is less than 10%. And there you go. Yeah, uh, exactly that. Um, and you can also do kind of spatial queries as well for anyone that's been doing kind of post just style stuff. Um, so here we have the kind of coordinates, which is in 4326. So in stack world, everything is in 4326. Um, and that's actually quite good because it's a way to, which just kind of means that there's less transformation problems and those kind of projections. Um, but you can also store um, the original extent as well. So for example, this one here, if we were to just kind of go through it, this is the tree woodland stems. So if you were to go to this URL, which is open, so you don't actually need a password at all. Uh, and the data involved in this is a parquet file with the tree woodland stems. I'm not sure if anyone can actually read it. I could try and zoom Control in, because otherwise it's just looking like blurs, isn't it? Ah, perfect. There we go. OK, so let's scroll down this one. So we have a polygon here, which is a VBox with five. First and also the same. Um, we have some properties. So whatever this was, was taken on, on uh, June 2020. Which, um, it comes with some table columns, so a parquet file is basically a way to like store store data like a CSV, but made for much bigger data. Um, it, and this is probably a geo a kind of geo parquet file, yeah. so has these columns for kind of spatial fun stuff, and then different links. So like you can put in in kind of anything here, but it basically means that you can have that one search, and you can search across literally anything. Um, and we found it to be really, really, really cool. Um, and we've been using it literally yeah. now for a few years. And it's for, yeah, since the version 0 0.03, which came out, yeah. the spec for it kind of was loosey goosey made in 2018, but now we are at stack 1.0.0 5RC, so it is quite advanced now. Yeah, and like, we even went to the stack conference, so it's like a group of just, of just some kind of special developers. Mostly from states, yeah. Yeah, kind of mostly from the states, um, kind of from Australia as well, um, who just kind of get together and just kind of work on this standard and see where it could yeah. be improved um, and what can come next. And the whole thing of stack is that eventually it's just going to kind of plug and play into QGIS and everything is going to be stack. Um, and kind of Microsoft have seen that, and that's why they've done this kind of planetary computer. But but there's loads of other uh, kind of data sets. If I go to stackindex.org. Yeah, while we look up that, so the beauty of stack is that it uh, describes your data uh, in, in the spatial and temporal extent. So a tip and trick for using stack is that it is mostly suited for raster data. It can serve vector data, but it's not uh, its uh, defined purpose at the beginning. But as we said, there is a lot of stack extension which you can write. Well, stack extension is just a fancy word for JSON schema file. Yeah. Which you apply for that. Yeah, but like, um, that's still being worked on as well. Yeah. So um, kind of a, a part of that talk that kind of we went to was actually talking about how that then this could also work with the vector data rather than just the um, kind of raster data. Um, but um, kind of this is stack index, and it's got absolutely tons of different um, just kind of catalogs, with the planetary computer just being one of them. Um, so digital Earth yeah, after. This one is very interesting. The Swiss one, this one? Yeah. So look, look at these types of data sets. So these are not only vectors. The, the, these are not only rasters, they are vectors. So you can see what everything can be stored in it. Like what, what is the potential? So Swiss put their census data basically into a big stack catalog and it served as as an entry point into every local council processing. So each council has its own like almost a multi-polygon which you can query the stack past API data with. So this is like a very simple kind of stack kind of browser as well. Um, so we can see here that the extent over Switzerland, but the stack version 0.9, so the stack version is now 
one or five. One or five. Um, but it's just like a really cool way to kind of index stuff, and and like it's pretty simple. It's just a few JSON things, really. I kind of at the end of the day, but it serves a kind of massive purpose. And yeah. kind of loads of really big companies are now working to actually put all of their data indexed through something like this. Yeah. So if we had to give some few quick tips and tricks with Stack, basically is use Geo, uh, Geo cloud optimized Geo tips or Cog whenever you can, because uh, some tooling which does with Stack integrates very nicely with them. If you think that you need to write something that is wrapping around your Stackfast API as a, like a front and back end viewer, you probably don't need to because their co open source community is huge. And there is Stack Browser, Stack Signing Proxy, Zero Stereo, plugins, QGIS plugins. So yeah, don't look for the stuff that you that you think you need to write because it might might be existing, yeah. and use JSON formatter, basically. Yeah. 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 Um, so there's kind of stack lint and stuff as well. Yeah. Don't kind of validate things. So like, there's loads of stuff really to make Ty this easy. Typing extensions for Python. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, kind of. We could probably go on for kind of literally hours about this because we've been doing this for like years now. Yeah. <laughs> but if anyone has any questions, we can build them. I'm sure quite confusing, but if anyone does have anything. So are you doing commercial projects for companies? Can you give me some, give some examples of some projects you've worked on? Oh. So for, for, a, for a satellite applications catapult, we build them a stack portal, basically. So all the public sources that James have showed you on stack index, they do exist. But uh, the problem with uh, setups for, with their use cases, they want to overlay that free, like, free open source data with their closed source data or data like Maxar's Planet, all of that. So we build them a stack, uh, stack portal-ish like utility, which will let them drag and drop Maxar orders into a front end window and it will convert them to cogs and automatically index them into Stackfast API by determining their ex extents and uh, required plugins and all that. So on the end of that system, also you have a portal front end where you can ingest data from public sources, select your map, give me this AOI and clone it into my catalog. Also I have loaded some Maxar data for that AOI using my drag and drop utility. Now I have a API endpoint, which is behind Azure API management, and my scientists can actually write some mm. from Python notebooks around that, which would overlay the data and do whatever stuff they need to. So we are uh, also this one. Usually, uh, usually just writing a aggregation, aggregation services, which will let you leverage the commercial data with the open source data. So you can say that our Customers are commercial and also like open yeah. source. So, uh, whatever we can write, we write in open source. So, yeah, if that was the quick question. Yeah, and like, um, and another one that Uncle we've done using Stack is this common sensing projects. So, the backbone really of this whole project, even though there's loads of scientists involved, um, is actually Stack. So, all of the data that we've got, um, including the kind of proprietary data from kind of Unisat. Stuff like that, that we kind of stackified everything, so it means that the scientists then have an easier job, just just really to be able to have that kind of one query that's then able to get all of those assets in our kind of one place, um, and that's the beauty of Stack, and that's why yeah. kind of projects like this are able to exist pretty easily. Yeah, aggregation of data set and uh, leveraging these uh, the signing capabilities. You don't need to, you don't want scientists to register on seven dozen seven dozen different websites for seven different API keys and make their Python notebooks obscure and unreadable. Just, yeah, this is our Stackfast API. Give it, give it AOI, give it time date, and that, that's your data. Yeah, and like, we would love to be able to show you the yeah, kind of portal that I'm gonna, we were just talking it's about, VPN. but, but like, we don't know if we're allowed yeah. to actually show it, to be honest. <laughs> but it's really yeah. cool. Um, yeah. Sorry, got another. Yep. Yes. Um, the index that you showed at the start, is that simply a list of all the data sets that are available? Yes. That also open access to the satellite? Uh, so, can you go back to that page, please? The stackindex.org. Yes. So, stackindex.org is a page of uh, public available stack fast API, stack API, sorry. And most of them are, uh, so yes, if protected is the one that is. It is existing. You can browse it with the okay, spatial okay. extents, all of that, but you wouldn't be able to download the tips themselves. So, yeah, but when it says public and it's an API, that in 90% of the case means you can just click on link and get the TIFF. Yep. Uh, yep. So my question was, you got a lot of data from a lot of different sources. If you're building something based on all of that, 
is there an inherent fragility to it because you've got lots of different servers and data sources that could come and go? Uh, because stack is standard and it specifies the seven or eight fields in that JSON body, which always needs to be true. So we are focusing writing our code on the fields that are only part of the standard. Yeah, so that's the problem that it's actually trying to fix. So there is that I'm kind of set the standard. I'm kind of metadata things which I'm kind of exist. So like the kind of date time, the bbox, um, date time bbox ID, EPSG, yeah, projection in four three two six to find it original projection in uh, whatever the projection system is, mm -hmm. and the license. So these are the seven. And then you can put absolutely anything in there. Um, so you can put in stuff like the sun azimuth, the cloud cover. Yeah, with the ex extra extensions angle, you can. Yeah. Day, whatever. It's just, it's on the end of the day, it's just JSON. So yeah. as long as you write a, a JSON schema for it, and it, so on the end of the stack record, there is a conforms to section where you can put a list of stack, a list of JSON uh, schema that it needs to follow. And, that makes it a valid stack. Yeah, so each of these endpoints in the StackPast API, you can actually see that it has a next, previous, current, so it is all scrape friendly too, so all the utilities and tools are meant to just integrate with it. Yeah, so there's kind of a ton of stuff and it's quite, it's quite sometimes overwhelming to look at a JSON, but that's why there's all of these open source things out there to make it actually readable and you can just kind of give it this kind of URL and then it will know what to do because it's always the same format. Can I? Of course can. But it's two screens, so you have yes. to look at the other one. I'll find it. Of course, yes, go on. <laughs> um, how did you get to so you can start? start? Um, What's the point where you had a normal job and now you're doing it? Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm just thrown into it, I think. <laughs> no. By who? Um, by the Common Sensing Project was how I started. So I've been working now for Spatial Days, which is a company, spatialdays.com, um, for like it is there for three and a half years, right? And and I was straight on to the Common Sensing Project when I first started. Um, and back then there was an Earth observation scientist called Tom Jones, which is a great name. I like to say that one, um, who found this stack stuff. And back then it was in the very early days, so 0 0.0.3 slash beta. Um, but, o but over the years, we've seen it kind of develop, and it's been a thing that so many industries have really wanted, just like that kind of one single source of truth to where everything is. And, and it actually saves a lot of money as well because it stops the kind of, the kind of duplication then of data. Because quite often, a lot of the clients that are, we found um, have said stuff like they've done an order for some kind of Maxar stuff which has cost them a hundred thousand pounds but then they've done another order a few years later and it's pretty much the exact same thing and they just wasted all of that money yeah i started in automotive and fpga so i have no idea how i ended up <laughs> with this to be honest yeah so the best way to understand what stack spec is is by going to a stack browser which is radiant earth's Yes. GUI for the stack API. So you can see this in Microsoft Planetary's case, you have a bunch of collections. This is this should be collections, not catalogs, yeah, by right. the way. So 122 on Microsoft. And the, they give you a thumbnail overview. So the one that we like to work particularly is this. Is it the Sentinel 2? Uh, uh, Landsat. 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 30 meter. Sat. Probably on another page. Ah, C2. Tons of stuff. Yeah. Ah, wrong, wrong level, but never mind. It, it we also work. had the um, um, kind of height models and stuff there as well. So the um, kind of digital terrain yeah. models there's, and the height elevation stuff. So you can sacrify that as well. Okay. So you can see that this Landsat collection two level one is, it is. So the one, one, one drawback that we have with Stackfast API we're actually trying to resolve is that most of the collections specify bounding box extent of whole world. But you can actually see that the data is just like a bit of North America. So it's, it's loading up a bit slow, but this is a nice way to inspect uh, what is the on collection level. So you need to specify thumbnail, uh, what, are your, uh, what are your fields in this collection, uh, how do you index it and all of that. So you can see that you have providers, NASA and USGS making it and Microsoft hosting it. You see which bands means what, like what micrometer range or what wavelengths for the sensor, stuff like that, and some metadata ID. That is collection level. So, but when you open an item, this is where you, this is Landsat 5, 
but uh, the, uh, they did preserve stack spec from Landsat 5 to Landsat 9. So if you open one of them, you can see that at basic, you see in this general field, it says time and date, platform instruments, cloud cover of 0%. This is custom Lancet extension, mm. extension which specifies zero, scene ID, mm. path. Oh, right. So everything on this uh, right-hand side column is what you can search your StackFast API against. And then all of these kind of assets as well. So we have some kind of metadata stuff in here too. So um, yeah. yeah. So yeah, this link probably wouldn't be downloadable. But yeah, so that is one of the things that we are writing about is signing proxy services, so which would intercept your URL, append a token, bring it back to you and stuff like that. Yeah, so st stack index, stack, uh, stack browser and stack fast API would be the three write down points if you want to pursue this further. Yeah. Any more questions? Is it a, is it a standard? No. Yeah, so it is OGC supported standards. Yeah, it's special. How does it fit in with the CSW, the catalog service for the web? They're both kind of... They are kind of both standards, but they are, uh, they are not really inter interconnected. So this is a whole from scratch standard which was written. It is not meant to be something that is like WMTS or WMS, if that's what you mean. This is, a, this, with it. This, is, this, is almost, this is not a serving standard. This is a cataloging standard to how to store it. And then you can, from this stack record, you can write downstream services to transfer it over the web however you want. It is more, more of a storage standard than, yeah. than serving standard. An indexing standard because yeah. you don't actually store the data here because the data is still stored in like the kind of S3, right? Or, or just on someone's server somewhere. But you can still point the stack to go to that data. So this is just about the indexing and having that kind of metadata. Okay. Yeah, I'm, maybe I'm we misunderstood your question. Is, more, yeah, maybe we misunderstood your question, maybe, so. Well, it looked to me like the metadata catalog system. I was wondering where the CSW is failing for the reason for stack to come along. Oh, well, it's uh, basically you, a temple side of things, but I guess. You know that, that the joke when it said, well, we have 14 standards, we need one to unite them all, now we have 15 standards, so that could be one, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, probably something like that, to be honest. Yeah, it is a nifty way, so you can store it. As, there is a StackFast API, which is a Flask slash yeah, Flask, Flask powered API for this, but nothing is preventing you from That's storing just well. JSON files on a S3 storage and just navigating through that. So it is a storage standard, not a server. Or, so it's stack standard uh, specifies how you should store it and what features should it have. Not, so stack fast API and stack standard are not the same thing. So if I just go to stack standard. GitHub maybe? Yeah, I'll GitHub to it. That's the one. So you can see that uh, this uh, repo is the standard for it. And it will just say what needs to be stored on a collection level. That's in JSON schema. So this, this is a bit hard to read, but they also give you a nice readme. But obviously then with the stack fast API, it takes a lot of this complexity out of it um, because you then don't have to, I'm just gonna go through the schemas, you just have to make the request in the way that it says, and then it will just kind of fill in these JSONs for you. Yeah. So you can see that on, on item level, you need to specify these and stuff like that. So it is more of a standard to store, not how to serve. Yeah. <laughs> any more, any more? Perfect, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.